So today we're going to talk about the ACDC ETF from ETF Securities. You guys always hear me talk about different ETFs from BetaShares, Vanguard, iShares, VanEck and all these other ETF providers but there's often an ETF provider which is obviously ETF Securities that is often overlooked by Australian investors and today we're going to dive into this specific ETF. I'm also going to talk about how you guys can buy this ETF completely brokerage free using a new brokerage platform called Perla more about that in this video. Hey guys, my name is Faizy and this channel is about finance and investing. As usual, before we begin, this video is not to be taken as financial advice. I'm not gonna tell you to buy this ETF. I've simply done some research on this ETF and I'm just presenting my thoughts and what I've learned. So hopefully you guys can find some value in this. Let's get into this ETF. So ACDC is of course the battery tech and lithium ETF. And let me tell you guys, I actually love this name because this name represents the iconic Australian band that was ACDC. If you guys know what I'm talking about. But it's also a clever name in a sense that AC stands for alternating current and DC stands for direct current. So it's kind of like a, it's a very fitting name to say the least because obviously that's related to electricity and battery and power and energy. You guys get what I'm talking about. So what makes this ETF unique? Let's talk about it. Now, obviously this ETF is giving you exposure to the energy storage megatrend that's only going to grow in the future. But an interesting thing that I found about this ETF is the fact that this ETF includes companies involved in the whole value chain when it comes to this battery and lithium production. So what do I mean by that? So basically it includes companies from the very beginning when it comes to the actual raw material stage and the mining stage when they're actually mining the materials for this battery and of course the chemicals as well. And then the ETF includes companies at the manufacturing and the sales stage. Some companies include Samsung STI and LG Chemical as well. And then the last stage is the application and the end user stage where the final product is made and we get the products as the end consumer. So some examples of this are getting the final iPhone, which obviously has the lithium battery or getting an electric car from Tesla. So based on that, you guys can definitely see that this ETF covers the whole process of the lithium when it comes to the production the manufacturing and of course the end user as well. So it gives you a holistic exposure to this lithium battery market. So what are the benefits of this ETF? Let's talk about it. So starting off with the first benefit, as you guys can see, we obviously know that lithium demand is rising and batteries are getting more and more efficient over time. Now think about your iPhone from six to seven years ago. Think about what it could do back then. Think about the actual battery life of that iPhone at that stage. And now compare it to the battery life of your iPhone right now. Chances are it's, there's going to be a huge improvement in that battery life and our phones have actually gotten much more advanced since then, right? You've got a heaps bigger screen and you can do so many more things with it. You can connect your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you can even use it to make payments through NFC, you can do multitasking and you also get lots and lots of vivid colors as well. If you use a Samsung, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Samsung loves to give you give you guys those punchy colors. So obviously that uses up quite a lot of battery and lithium is getting more and more better over time. Similarly, lithium is also being used for electric vehicles because there is of course more demand for those moving forward. We are seeing more and more car manufacturers turn around their production processes to account for this renewable mega trend that's going to grow. And the good thing about lithium batteries is the fact that they're not as heavy as other industrial batteries which makes them a very good choice to use in cars and they can also store quite a lot of energy compared to its actual weight which is obviously a very big plus because if you're driving an electric car you can't have too big of a heavy battery if you look at Teslas the reason why they're able to accelerate so quickly is because that battery gives them that instant torque that instant power and if the battery is too heavy then it's only going to weigh the car down and it's not going to be as quick so that's just a very rough example for you guys. So having a look at the second benefit of this ETF, it's going to give you that global coverage because it's well diversified because mostly we see with these international ETFs is that they're mostly skewed towards the US. You'll find that they're skewed about 40% of the US and then the next country down is like, like 20% or something. So this ETF tries to kind of balance that out and it tries to get an overall exposure to the growing trend of this ETF geographically as well. We'll have a look at this in more detail, but looking at the third benefit of this ETF, this of course gives you exposure to this green shift and this whole mega trend that we're going to see that's only going to grow moving forward. Now guys, before we go any further, I just want to clarify that I learned quite a lot about this ETF, not just from their website, but actually from a podcast that 
that this ETF was mentioned in and that podcast is the Australian Finance Podcast. Link in description by the way now. If you guys want to listen to this podcast and if you have like a spare 40 minutes, do check it out. It was very valuable. Listen to the podcast at like 1.5x but trust me, it was very valuable. I learned quite a lot about how this ETF works so definitely check it out. So this podcast was basically an interview of Kanish Chug as you guys can see. He is actually the head of distribution at ETF Securities now. Fun fact, he actually came to my university networking event back in 2018 and that was like my final year of university so I thought it might be good to do some networking. And back then these guys were actually being congratulated for launching this ACDC ETF so it was quite a big moment for these guys and back then in university I thought to myself what the hell is this? Who in their right mind would actually buy this ETF? Why would you invest in batteries? And I like that was what was going through in my head, right? I thought to myself, batteries are pretty boring. Why don't these guys spend some time to actually make an ETF that people actually want to buy? Who the hell actually wants to invest in battery technology? That was like the most boring thing to me at the time. And I thought to myself, this ETF isn't going to make any money for investors. And this is like pretty crap, right? And during that time as well, when the ETF first launched, it was like falling in value back then. It fell around 12% in the first three months of launching. So, you know, back then I wasn't really too bullish on this ETF as well, just by looking at like the one month graph, which basically means nothing because the ETF just launched. But thank God I didn't actually say anything out loud and I just kept it all to myself because I was so damn ignorant back then and I'm so glad that I don't think like this anymore and that was a very limited way to think about this sort of ETF because this is a huge mega trend and I'm just glad that I kept it all to myself because the thing is this ETF has actually done pretty well so let's have a look at the returns right now. So having a look at the one year return it's done very well and it's sitting at about 72.5% which is doing much much better than other like broad market ETFs that are out there right now and having a look at the max return for the ETF it sits at somewhere around that 83% mark. So as you guys can see by this amazing graph it's done quite well just for an ETF. Yeah I'm so glad that I just kept it all to myself and I probably deserve this for like thinking like that and I missed out on this because of my limited way of thinking. Anyways guys if you have found value in this so far please leave a like or subscribe. I do really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Let's have a look at how you can buy this ETF completely brokerage free. Now this is of course using a new broker called Perla and this is specifically made for long term investors like myself. And the best thing is it is also chess sponsored and it's focused on getting rich slow which is their slogan as you guys can see. And what they mean by that is basically using compound interest to compound your wealth over time. Not day trading but sustainable investing over time. Now with this broker you can set up auto invest which means that you can basically leave your investments on autopilot so you can keep on investing over time and what that does is that it allows you to stop timing the market and leave your investments on autopilot and you can basically keep on dollar cost averaging over time into your portfolio. It's pretty competitive to other brokers as well like self wealth you are paying about 950 per trade and if you hold this ETF security ETF for over a year the brokerage on the ETF is completely free. You're only going to pay brokerage once you sell and the selling fee is going to be 950 so effectively you're paying less than five dollars for buying and selling the ETF which in my eyes is pretty good. Now guys for transparency this is not sponsored at all but if you do use my code Fezzi which is my first name you will get your first investment completely free so that's like a $10 brokerage credit that you're going to get and this is of course an affiliate link just to be very honest here. Now having a look at some high level figures for this ETF we can see that the management fees are 0.69% per year which look it might seem pretty high but the thing is this ETF is targeting a huge mega trend that's obviously going to keep on growing and if you listen to the podcast they're going to outline how fast the market's going to grow and how big of a market share the lithium battery market is going to have when it comes to the overall battery market so I think this one is still worth considering and don't worry too much about the fees actually look at what the ETF is tracking because ultimately that's what's going to deliver you guys the growth and the dividend or distribution frequency of this ETF is annually which means that you are going to be getting a payment once per year. Now if you are looking to receive regular dividends on your ETFs this one is not really for that purpose it's mostly meant for 
that capital growth over time as the industry grows. But if you guys are looking for an ETF that gives you that monthly distribution, check out my video on eInvest. Most of their ETFs give you a monthly return on your investment. So they give you monthly dividend returns. So that's pretty good. Check it out. There should be a link somewhere here as well. Checking out the top 10 holdings for this ETF, you can definitely see some companies that you would not have heard of previously. And I'm in the same boat right here. I can recognize some names though, like Daimler. I think they're part of Mercedes. Then you've got BMW and Tesla is here as well. However, it's not in the top 10 holdings. Currently, I think it has a holding of about 2.7%. And the reason why Tesla is not at the top, even though it probably has the highest market cap on this list, is the fact that this ETF is not weighting the companies based on market cap. It is not a market cap weighted ETF. This is mostly an equal weighted ETF. And the whole rationale for this is that they want to capture growth equally in all the sectors. Checking out the sector allocation, you can see that a large weighting is in industrials and materials. And that's basically the raw material stage of this ETF. So you've got all the companies that are mining the actual materials to make these batteries. And then you've got consumer discretionary and that's basically the application stage and the end consumer like you and me. So basically these are companies that are selling those electric vehicles and those mobile phones and other electronics as well. So based on this, you guys can see that you're taking advantage of not just one sector of the whole lithium battery market. You're buying into everything when it comes to the production process, the manufacturing and the end consumer stage as well. Now on this podcast, they mentioned something pretty interesting and that was something called a balancing effect, right? Now, since this ETF basically includes the whole value chain and the whole supply chain an interesting effect happens if the value of lithium was to fluctuate so let's say that the value of lithium was to fall right the actual manufacturers and the producers and the miners for this lithium product they would be making less revenues because well the price of lithium has fallen but when it comes to the end consumer and the end application stage, when those companies actually buy the lithium, they're gonna be buying that lithium at a much lower price, which means that they're going to be increasing their profits. And this balancing effect kind of works out both ways. If the price of lithium was to go up, then the manufacturers and the miners of this lithium are going to benefit quite greatly. And then it's going to reduce the profits of that end company. So it kind of has an averaging out effect if you guys get what I mean. So the last thing that we're gonna look at is the country allocation. And we can see that the highest allocation is based in Japan at 23%. Then you've got the US at a close second at 22.6%. And you've got some other Asian countries and some other European countries as well. And Australia as well, quite surprisingly at 8.6 because we've got lots and lots of mining here too. So you can see that it's not fully skewed towards America and it is quite diversified globally. So that's good to see because they're gonna be taking advantage of this whole mega trend moving forward. Now guys, I'll be very honest. I've only recently looked into this ETF, but after listening to the podcast and after doing some research for this video, I'm definitely going to be buying into this one. I think that this is worth looking into, obviously with the whole renewable energy and sustainability trend moving forward i think this could be a good investment but once again do make sure to do your own research i'm not telling you to buy into this one this is just me presenting my ideas and my thoughts and let me know in the comments what you think and since i can buy this etf using perla for basically zero cost i think it's going to be worth it it's basically a no-brainer so do check out perla if you are interested because if you are looking to buy this etf chances are you are going to be holding for that long term anyway so you're only going to be paying brokerage once you sell at 950. anyways guys that was the video if you enjoyed it check out this one which talks about the five invest etfs some of these ETFs are income producing ETFs, which means that you'll get a payment monthly, which is quite handy. And this is my top playlist, which includes ETFs from the top Vanguard ETFs, Beta Shares, E-Invest, iShares, all those companies. So check it out. And guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Now on the podcast, they mentioned now on this now on this podcast.